It starts with you and yourself walking into a room and supporting somebody else, regardless if you agree or disagree. Hello, beautiful. Welcome to Aesthetic Influencers, where we explore the world of medical aesthetics and the relationship between inner and outer beauty. We're on a mission to empower a million women a day to level up their look and their life through the Bianca lifestyle of beauty, intelligent decision making, attractiveness, and noble character attributes. I'm your host, Marco Emilio Valle, and you're going to love today's show. Yeah, so I have got Botox and some filler. Um, and I'm so happy with it. I'm so happy with it. And I think for a long time, I was made to believe that it was like a secret. Mm -hmm. Like you couldn't, you couldn't tell anybody. Like you were, <laughs> you were put in some kind of box or category, stigma, if you will. Um, if you got treatment, aesthetics done. And so Breaking the mold of that, I feel like, has been really important for me because I'm very passionate about just being yourself, being the most amazing, beautiful individual that you are, whether you have Botox or any procedure done or you don't. It's the same scenario of to each their own and like supporting people, rallying behind people, regardless of what their decision is, if they want it or if they don't, if they believe in it or if they don't, supporting them where they're at, I feel like is very, very vital especially in the culture of women. Yeah. I think we need that more. We need more support. Um, and that it starts with us. It starts with you and yourself walking into a room and supporting somebody else, regardless if you agree or disagree. There's such a bigger picture, you know? Um, and so it's been an interesting journey. At first, my family was like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're gonna get a needle on your forehead? <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I am. And I'm going to love it. And so now they're supportive, but it's because their mindset and belief system stems from how they were raised or what the culture was around them. And so it's really redefining the culture behind the beauty industry. Karen, is there a parallel between what Sam is describing with regard to her grandparents and the previous generation's perspective around always looking your best and being done up when you leave the house versus now the Sam's perspective and the newer generation's thoughts around medical cosmetics? A hundred percent. And I think the best place to become, like to stand in this place of empowerment mm. that you make your yeah. decisions yeah. on who you are and what you want Beautiful. and becoming conscious, like, hmm, is the decision that I'm about to make because of my upbringing, mm -hmm. because of what my parents or my grandparents said or what mm -hmm. society said, mm -hmm. or am I making this decision consciously for me? Yeah. Um, so we bring a set of like mindfulness skills. I think definitely we work on that mm -hmm. in coaching as well as saying like, I want you to become very conscious mm -hmm. on your past messages that were mm -hmm. told to you and begin to start making decisions right. for you yeah. because of what you want. Mm -hmm. Sam, what led you to get Botox and filler, and where did you get it? Yeah, great question. So, well, first of all, preventative. I did some research, and I talked to a few people. Um, several of my friends have gotten treatments done and have loved it, raved about it. Um, and so uh, there was one day I was putting on my makeup, and I, when you go to do your mascara, your, your eyes lift up, your eyebrows. And I was like, there's several wrinkles there. And so I was like, I need Botox. <laughs> I want Botox. Um, and so that was kind of my journey of, of why I was wanting to get it. So the first time I went, I got Botox in my forehead. Um, and this was about three years ago. So I was 26. And then fast forward two years, 28, um, I received filler in my chin and also Botox in my chin and around my crow's feet. So Sam, why did you get filler and Botox in your chin? Let's start there. Yeah, so I just wanted a more defined and stronger chin. And when I talked with the team at the med spa, they were communicating that in order to achieve that, 
that getting filler and Botox in my chin would give me the results that I was looking for, and it has, and it's been great. I've been so happy with it. You got the Botox to smooth out any dimples, right. and you got the hyaluronic acid filler to create more definition, yep. a stronger profile, mm -hmm. and you're happy with the results. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I did it. I love it. Karen, is it fair to say that you would describe Sam's choices around cosmetic procedures and medical aesthetics as very healthy and in harmony with the inner work that she's doing? A hundred percent. I mean, the external beauty and the internal beauty and the internal work and the external work. I mean, she's doing them perfectly, right? It's what do I need? What do mm -hmm. I want? What makes me feel good today? Yeah. And tomorrow, if she doesn't want Botox tomorrow, she's going to say, I don't feel like Botox this round. Mm -hmm. And when she feels like it, she'll make that decision mm -hmm. as well because she is coming from a place of wholeness. 100%. Sam, what would you tell that little girl years ago who was wondering wow. whether she was good enough? I would tell her what I know now. And I, what I know now is that your worth, your value, who you are as a person, as a child, doesn't come from a single person. And you can't find it in a single person, whether that is a parent figure, um, a friend, a relationship, a husband, a wife, a brother or sister. Those people can't fulfill you. And I think I was searching for so long for somebody to fulfill me and would always end up empty-handed because that's not the design. And so I would, I would tell her that the search can be over and you're not going to find what you're looking for in any person, even if you want to, even if you believe that you can. At the end of the day, that, that little girl, the little girl today that's still inside of me has to be happy and free with who she is. And, um, even just like thinking back to moments of when I was that little girl and feeling so defeated when I would hope my dad would show up that day and he didn't. And I would look inwardly in those moments and like I was telling you before, I would ask myself, well, what's wrong with me? And I think that that's been the theme. And if I could have nipped that then, the story of being enough would be what I would tell her. You're enough. Yeah. Regardless if he shows up today or tomorrow or never, you, who you are, remains the same because you are enough. Um, so that's, that's what I would tell her. What's your biggest takeaway from this conversation? And what topic are you dying for us to cover next? Comment below and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And tell a friend. Together, we'll grow this channel and the Bianca movement. We'll see you next time here at the intersection of inner and outer beauty.